Hi, I'm George Crump, Lean Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. At the top of most IT whiteboards is the cloud. How to get there, how to best use it, and how to leverage it. We're going to talk about that today. And helping me in the conversation, I've invited George Simon. He's the COO of Shoreline. Uh, thanks for joining us today, George. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about Shoreline. What do you guys do? Shoreline is a company that's focused primarily on migration and disaster recovery and the ability to go from any physical, virtual, or cloud to any other physical or virtual cloud. So the ability to transform as you're moving your data or your applications. Okay, so perfectly appropriate to what we're talking about today. Absolutely. So why don't you take us through what you got drawn up here on the whiteboard? So what I'm showing is just an example of a company, mm -hmm. data center, physical servers, virtual servers, network connection to a cloud. Okay. Okay. So this cloud, uh, for example, could be GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. Okay. Okay. And what we would do is, you know, two different scenarios. One, you might want to start using the cloud for disaster recovery. Okay. Right so way to... disaster recovery as a service, as an example. Exactly. Okay. And there, you would have, in this case, I put a little Sherline <coughs> virtual machine okay. that runs on both sides of it. Okay. And what we do is we don't have to install. We have an agentless okay. environment, so you don't have to install it on each of these systems. Okay. And again, we have uh, an environment over here which acts as you know, the capture. Okay. okay. And it's the ability to have, first of all, just one connection here between your site and the cloud. Okay, so everything flows through the Shoreline virtual machine. Exactly. Gotcha. And okay. in doing that, we're able to capture the data from mm -hmm. each of these. We compress the data. We du deduplicate the data. We encrypt the data. So you are completely safe with your information flowing. You don't have a lot of connections between the two. And anybody snooping won't be able to see anything that's going, at least make sense of it. OK. So, and so that also, that deduplication and compression obviously minimizes my bandwidth utilization here and also my footprint in the cloud as well, right? Exactly. OK. And then you can decide. Do you want a hot environment there where everything's running? Or do you want a cold environment that you're only going to bring up in case of a disaster? Okay. Um, there you look at trade-offs, right, in the cloud. Am I paying for a virtual machine to be running all the time? Or do I really just want to run it when I do a test or have an actual disaster recovery? Right. So it gives you the flexibility there. Sure. So, but, the, but that's the important thing. The IT guys get to choose which makes the most sense according to their budget and need, right? Exactly. Okay. So is there a, sort of a workflow that you try to walk people through here? There is a workflow. And, and you know, as, as we talk about it, let me bring up the second item, which is migration. And okay. then, because the workflow doesn't change much between migration and disaster recovery. If, oh, okay. you, if you think about it, migration is just a single disaster recovery. Okay. I just had to do it once. Right. Mm -hmm. So as, as you start moving more to the cloud, um, you might look at migrating your data. You might look at migrating entire workloads into the cloud. Okay, and so you guys facilitate that as well. We facilitate that. Okay. And you know, if you're just moving one workload, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But when I start to move 50, 100, 1,000 workloads, mm -hmm. there you need a real process. And, and that's where this planning comes in. Okay. Right? Well, and I think the other part there is we'll use the term workload a lot. A lot of times a workload could be a, a group of virtual machines, right? So there's an Absolutely. interdependency a lot of times. And do so you guys kind of account for that as well? A Absolutely. Okay. So in this planning process, you can say that this particular virtual machine depends on this particular virtual machine. And by the way, if I need to bring them up, this one has to come up before that one. And oh, so your, your complex applications mm -hmm. yeah, need to both migrate together, need to migrate in the right state, and then need to come up in the right way. So kind of the idea of like a consistency group almost uh, that's, within that. That's exactly right. Okay. Um, so that's part of that planning process, right? Okay. What, what comes across, what's interrelated. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are other parts of the planning process is I want to, what's my network configuration? Does that need to change, mm -hmm. right? How much, you know, I have two virtual CPUs here. Do I want two virtual CPUs? Do I want one virtual CPU? So as part of your planning process, you can determine what the end state is going to look like. Okay. And, and that's an important aspect of migration or DR that a lot of companies don't take into account, which is as I'm running whether it's this physical server or maybe this virtual server on VMware, right. 
when I'm running this virtual machine in the cloud, in Google Cloud here, mm -hmm. it's not VMware that it's running on, right? Course, yeah, and right. so transformations need to take place as I do that migration or DR, otherwise it's not going to come up. Right. right, and so you guys manage that process as well? We manage that process. We okay. insert drivers if drivers are needed. Um, we also let you put scripts together because licensing might be different, okay. or the virus detection that I'm running here, I don't want to run there, you know, all these different okay. things. So that's part of that planning process that, you know, I decide what needs to go, how it needs to go, how it's going to look at the other side. So once you've planned it, then, yeah, we do the capture you, we were talking about before. Okay. And in a migration or in a DR, again, it's not that different. I continually migrate because changes are going on. Mm -hmm. One of the other things you want to avoid, downtime. Right, right, right. So I want to continually move the data across, but then I want to be able to break it and test. Right. Right. Again, right. whether it's a migration, I want to make sure it came properly, or whether it's DR and I want to do a monthly test to make sure my disaster recovery right. actually works. So in a works. DR situation, that, that update is probably you know, more or less continuous in a migration sort of one-time deal, but you want to leave your existing stuff so in case something goes wrong up here, you can, you're still running down here, right? Right. Well, and, and when I'm doing the testing, I want to be running down here, okay. right? Otherwise, what happens for a lot of people today is I have to take the application down, I do the migration, I, now I'm down an hour, a day, multiple right. days. Right. Right. So it, you, it, that's why migration is a single DR, but you are going to need to update as you go through the process until you're happy with it. Once I'm happy with it, then I'll bring this down. Any final changes go, and I bring up the application in the cloud. So, George, why don't, why don't we take people real quickly through that, that workflow uh, that, that you're talking about? Excellent. So. So the starting, as we probably spent the most time on, is planning. Is planning right. right. Once I have a plan in place and I start to execute it, again, one of the things I can do is say, when do I want this plan to kick off? Mm -hmm. I may do some of these at night on Saturday. I may do some more on Sunday. So I can set the timing of that plan. Okay. Um, then you know what happens is capture, right? Capturing the data. So that's as that data transfer that we were talking about. Exactly. Right. Okay. And then there's a transformation, right? Okay. And that that's happens. that's that making it so it can run any hypervisor or anywhere. Exactly. Right? Okay. Um, and then you know you have a testing process, make sure okay. it worked. If not, I need to go back. Right. Figure out what didn't yep. adjust. But I think an important thing is there's no pressure on that test because you still have the original state as well. Exactly, right? and everybody's running. Right. Right. Makes so sense. I don't have anybody down. Nobody's yelling. Yep. All those Makes good sense. things. And then finally, you do the cutover. Okay. And so. that's if if it's a migration that you sever this link and you're running there permanently, or in a disaster, your building's gone or whatever, and then you're ready to go there. That's exactly right. Awesome. Well, George, thanks very much for joining us. Today. My pleasure. So there you have it. Getting to the cloud is easier than it's ever been. You just have to have the right tools and the right process to make sure you execute it correctly. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.